Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for in-depth courses and a ton of more free videos, just like the one you're seeing right now. This is the first episode in a series where we're going to take really famous popular drum beats and we're gonna create them by hand in Easy Drummer 3's grid editor. And it's not limited to Easy Drummer 3. People can use your piano rolls or whatever VST that has a grid editor in it. It doesn't matter. I have a tune track themed YouTube channel, so I'm teaching an Easy Drummer 3. In this first episode, I really want to define a few things in the grid editor and talk about a couple and define some terminology. So as this series kicks off, starting with episode two and beyond, we can communicate better and move much faster. So let's get started. Over on the grid editor of Easy Drummer 3, let's look up here at these big numbers. One, two, three four, five. Those are measures. This is measure one in the song. This is measure five in the song. Simple enough. In between these big measure numbers, we're going to see like a fraction, a subdivision of measures. It says one, 1 1.3, two, 2.33. What's this 1.3? 1 1.3 1 .3 means that's beat number three in the first measure. 1.3. In the first measure, that's beat three. But there's more beats we want to identify. What if you don't see this? Zoom in more. Check this out. There we go. This is how I want to work. Now I see 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Let's ignore 2 and onwards. That's the rest of the song. We're really only working with one measure today. It's such a simple beat. We're doing Queen's We Will Rock You. most iconic arena style anthem ever. And it's not really a beat, it's people stomping on the floor and clapping with their hands, but when they play it live, they do it on the drum kit. So we're gonna do that today. So we're only working in the first measure. We're gonna ignore everything after the two. And this is beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four in measure one. Just like when you listen to music, you bob your head or you tap your foot naturally, one, two, three, four. Do, do, ka, do, do, ka. See how I can hum that drum beat and still count to four on my fingers? Like this. Do, do, ka, do, do, ka. So since we count to four naturally over and over again when we hear popular music, that's why these dividing numbers are up here. One, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. This is the fourth beat in the first measure. One other thing to point out in the grid editor before we move on is how many vertical lines we see. Now, when it comes to rock and roll, ACDC, for example, a lot of things based around the eighth note. And if we look in this resolution menu, we see eighth note right here. But what does resolution really mean? Well, when you pick up your primary instrument, whether it's a guitar, keyboard, kazoo, you know, you're playing certain rhythms. Ba, 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 You know, or you're doing combinations of those. Those need to be defined so they can be communicated. And that's all these fractions are. So if I was going do, do, ka, do, do, ka, and playing an ACDC riff, ja, jin, jin, ja, jin, jin, ja, those are eighth notes, okay? Just as an example. I like to set up eighth notes right out of the gate for almost anything I do, even if it's shreddy, progressive stuff, because when you start a beat, you're typically putting out your foundational elements. So I recommend taking this off auto if you're new to the grid editor and putting it on eighth notes. And it really tightens up these vertical lines so you can only program eighth notes. It's a beautiful thing. So with that beat in our head, doom, doom, pa. Doom, doom, ba. Well, the first thing we hear, there's stomps on the floor. Let's say that's a kick drum. So there's a kick drum on the one. And now if we count to four over and over again and think about that beat, do, do, ga. Snare drum's on the two. Snare drum's also on the four. Check it out. Do, do, ga. Do, do, ga. Right? Here's the two. Here's the four. Now let's identify the kick drums. We put out the easiest one because we know that kicks everything off, but let's count. Do, do, ga, do, do, ga. 
there's a kick on the one, but there's another one in between the one and two. And look, there's a line right there. So let's fill that in. And it's a repeating pattern. So let's just do, do, ka, do, do, ka. Check it out. And my tempo is not appropriate at all. Let me just tap tempo what I think it is. Do, do, ka, do, do, ka. Around 83. Now let's hear it. So that's a really fast way to explain something that's so complicated. But if you acknowledge what these numbers mean up here, you acknowledge that you're typically counting the four, at least when it comes to popular music, that you can kind of hear beats over this. And maybe identify the main hits and what numbers they fall on. Kick, snare, kick, snare and you get those broad strokes out, then you can kind of say, all right, well, there's not a beat falling on one of these main uh, beats, um, instrument hitting on one of these beats, but it's hitting in between. You can just start kind of peppering stuff around until you get it. That's a good amateur way to look at it. Let's just define a, a few really generic terms before we, you know, finish off this whole we will rock you beat. This is uh, just some terms for us to be able to talk in the future. Um, a downbeat, for the majority of my life, a couple decades anyway, I always thought a downbeat meant play when your head goes down. My head's going down, there should be a beat there. That is not a downbeat. A downbeat is the first beat in a measure. So we're in measure one, and the first beat is also right here at that one. So this is a downbeat. On measure two, there's a downbeat right here. On measure three, there's a downbeat right here. Here's all the downbeats in any measure ever. So when I say downbeat out loud, your drummer says, play on the downbeat, hit hard on the downbeat. Now we know he's talking about just hit hard on beat one. A backbeat, a backbeat typically has to do with the snare drum, probably only exclusively. And a backbeat specifically means play the snare on beat two and beat four which is exactly what We Will Rock You does. Do, do, ka, do, do, ka. One, snare, three, snare. One, two, three, four. Do, do, ka, do, do, ka. Right? So backbeats, when, when drummers discuss the theory of backbeats, they're only talking about a snare like this. And it can kind of just seem like two random snares out of the blue. I typically say backbeats have kick drum in it, but that's not the truth. It's just that I need a kick drum in there somewhere to tell me where I am in the measure. We're just hearing two snares loops. So if you put a kick on the downbeat, which is the first beat in your measure, now those snares make sense. So backbeats typically have a snare on the one and a snare on the three but a backbeat is actually just the snare drum on the two and the four, if you wanna be proper. And so from here, what's We Will Rock You? It's this, completely based off of a backbeat. One more thing, just for extra credit. Another good term besides downbeat and backbeat is four on the floor. That just means you play a kick note on every quarter quarter note, which I did not do. I just did that twice as fast, like this. This tempo's pretty slow, but this is disco, this is electronic music. When someone says four on the floor, that means the kick drum is counting every time you would count to four. Two, three, four, one, two, and then you put a backbeat on it. You know, play this at 150, and we got disco. Right? So let's get back to the We Will Rock You, which is do do ka, do do ka. We kind of ended the my first episode tutorial about how we can communicate with some terms and how we can look at the ruler in the grid editor. But now let's make this beat good. Um, when Queen plays this live, this kick is played on the toms. 
that doesn't sound big at all. It sounds pretty bad. So what we could do here is double it up. Um, I actually didn't watch them play this live recently, so I'm just going off the top of my head on how I would produce this beat. So I'm not trying to replicate what they do perfectly. But now that I've layered up the toms, now the toms should sound a bit bigger because we're hitting two of them at the same time with the same rhythm instead of just one. That definitely sounds bigger. Now, there's a super trick called flam because even though it's better now, this is a slower tempo arena rock style song. You want it to sound as big as possible with the performance. And then when you mix it, you make it sound even bigger. But let's make the performance sound bigger. Enter the flam. And a flam is when you have more than one hit. But the second hit is so close to the first, it's not technically a different rhythm, right? It's just they're hit almost at the same time, but you spread the timing out a little bit so they kind of flutter or fumble, but on purpose in a creative manner, not by mistake. Let's do that. I'm going to take snap off so I can actually grab, and I'm going to grab the arrow tool, so I can actually grab one of these dots and move it wherever I want without it sticking to one of these vertical, vertical resolution lines. So let me just grab these two and move it right just a tiny bit. And we're talking milliseconds. Now let's hear if these toms sound bigger. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Listen to these toms compared to these toms. Ready? Here we go. That's an insane difference. And if you're thinking like this is a lot of effort and I don't really hear the difference, so your ears just aren't tuned in yet. That is a huge performance difference and it sounds way better, at least for this style and this tempo, right? So now these toms sound much bigger, it makes this snare sound even wussier and smaller. Is wussy a, a politically correct word nowadays? I don't know. Apologies if so. I'm gonna grab the arrow tool. On PC it's control, on Mac it's probably option or command plus option, something like that. And I'm gonna grab it and drag it. And I, now I've duplicated this note and now I'm gonna tuck it in. Yeah, so now we have a flam on the snare. Down here, we just flammed a separate instrument. Now we're flamming the same instrument on the snare, which is actually probably the most common way to flam is on the snare drum. So let's hear this. <laughs> Sounds totally different. We'll just do one little velocity trick before we end this. If I look down here under the instruments list and I pop open my velocity lane, I'm going to select these two snares and zoom in. Both of these snares have the same velocity. Velocity is more power than it is volume, but it, it's both, okay? With the lack of me getting on a soapbox and uh, preaching about it. I just want that first one to sound weak. So it goes, and so it doesn't go, I want to go, a small ramping effect. I want this one to seem bigger. That's all. And now let's listen to this. You know what? Let me grab that second note and make it even a little bigger. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is great. Compare these to these. Hopefully you hear a difference. And if you do, I mean, you don't have to agree with me, but hopefully you go, wow, that's a big deal. So that's episode one, and it was longer on purpose because I wanted to get some foundational information out. So do subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Do comment below if you enjoyed this comment content because that helps me out very much so. So it's Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for paid courses and more free videos. Rock on.